We all want hard hitting drums that stick out in the mix that gives you the most appraisal you can get from a rapper, which is this facial expression. We often reach for high quality samples or try to adjust levels, making the kicks and claps the focal point and everything else fall around it, or even using effects like distortion or saturation. But there's one classic technique we tend to overlook. Can I get a drum roll, please? Compression. It's still one of the best techniques to give your kick that punch and make your drum sound more tight and glued together. For example, here are the drums before and after compression. Now the reason compression remains one of the best techniques is its ability to control the dynamic range. It's one thing to level your beats correctly, but you will still have that noticeable difference from the loudest peak and the smallest peak of your drum sound. By using a compressor, you're able to bring those peaks closer together, reducing the dynamic range and then creating a more in your face sound. Think of it like this. Imagine yelling in a large room where sound reflection takes time to reach your ears. Yo, yo. Versus yelling in a smaller space with fewer reflections. Yo, yo. However, be cautious of over compressing as it can make your transients less punchy and make your drum sound squash, something like this. I don't think that's right, it ain't supposed to be like that. Before we get into which compressor to use, let's first understand how to listen to compression. Because unlike working in a DAW that has visual plugins, it's a lot easier to see what you're doing when you're tweaking the settings versus the MPC, which you have to rely more on your ears. So it's crucial to focus on these three aspects to make compression more audible. Number one, transients, which are the peak moments of your sound. Pay attention to how the compressor is affecting it. Two, the bounce. Listen to how the compressor is impacting the overall energy and the groove of your drums. Number three, frequency, or more like isolating your drums. When you isolate the drums, you can focus on how it's shaping each drum. So we know with the kick being in the low end that the low end can probably sound more boomy or less punchy. And the snare and the clap can sound a lot more crisp or not really have that sizzle, you know, that brightness. Now that we grasp what to listen for, let's apply this to our drums. Since we're on a drum track, we can hit this eye icon over here, which is a quick shortcut to our mixer. And then we could just click into the box, go to an available insert, and then go to our dynamics. And as you can see, we have all these different compressors, but I would just stick with the air compressor because it has more of a visual look rather than if you was to go to the channel strip, you can see it's a bit more complex because it has the gate and the EQ settings. And if you go to the other ones like the bus compressor, there's just no visuals of what's really going on. And the other ones, they look the same as well. But don't worry, once we cover the primary settings, you'll be able to use any of these compressors. In most cases, a compressor feature these five settings, threshold, ratio, output gain, attack, and release. So let's start with threshold. Threshold. The threshold sets the level at which the compressor starts working. As you can see, the default setting for the threshold is very low. So I'm just gonna reset these settings real quick. Let's just bring our threshold all the way up. Bring our ratio about to two to one. Bring our output all the way down to be at zero. The release and the attack is fine for right now. Now going back to the threshold, if I press play, we can see the compressor won't be active. And not until I bring down the threshold, you'll start to see some reduction. So for the most part, when the audio passes the threshold, then the compressor will begin. If you set a higher threshold, less compression will occur while just only maintaining the peaks of your sound. Versus on the other hand, if you set a lower threshold, then it's going to affect more of the body of the sound and it's going to compress a lot more. Ratio. The amount of compression being applied to your sound. For example, if we set a ratio to 4 to 1, it means for every 4 decibel above the threshold, only 1 comes out. Now you don't gotta think that's super technical about it, just trust your ears. You can also gauge the compression by the reduction meter as well. But as a general guideline, a two to one ratio is like light compression. And if you have like a four to one, then that is like the medium. I wouldn't really go past that in my opinion, because once you get like 
up to like 10 or anything above 10, it kind of starts to work as a limiter because it's really compressing harder. Output gain, a volume knob that lets you adjust the levels of your audio after it's been compressed. Pretty much you would use this knob to gain stage because when you start to mess with the dynamic range, then your sound gets a lot quieter and we want to bring our levels back up to the original volume, assuming that you already mixed the levels of your beats properly. After that, you can A-B it before and after compression, making it much easier to understand the effect of compression. Attack. Attack time controls how quickly the compressor responds to levels passing the threshold. So if we set our attack high and press play, you'll see there's no reduction. That's because the transients already pass through, especially when it comes to drum sounds. If we take a look at sample edit, we can see how quickly our sounds end. These are fast transients. Now, once we lower the attack, you will start to see some reduction as it's taming the peaks. Release. Release time determines how long it takes for the compressor to stop reducing gain after the signal falls below the threshold. So if we set a shorter release time, pay attention to the reduction meter and you can see how fast the compressor lets up. Now if I set a longer release, look at the reduction meter and see how the compression lasts a bit longer. Now that we learned the basic fundamental of compression, let's quickly apply that to our drums. Starting with the threshold, we want to set it low enough to where it's capturing the peaks, but not too low where we start to lose the dynamic of our beat, which gives it that bounce. For the ratio, I'm gonna go a bit light with it, so anywhere from two to three. At this point, I'm not really too focused on the reduction meter because I wanna get the attack and the release settings dialed in. Now, the release is pretty high, so I just wanna make sure I bring that down to where the transients are being hit. In this case, you want it to be short because with hip hop drums, they're a bit faster. And if we had a longer release, we start to lose a bit of that groove. And then I'll bring my attack up to probably one millisecond. I don't want it too low. Now for the output, we want to match it close to the original volume, but keep in mind it won't be exact because the dynamic range is less, so you're going to perceive it a bit louder. So if I was to do off, this is how it sounds. And on. Let's turn it up a bit more. You can hear that it's losing a bit of its transients. What we can either do is bring up the attack or we could bring up the threshold. I'm gonna bring up the attack a little. Now that's pretty much how you make your drum stand out in the mix using compression. Remember, relying on your ears is key. It's not just about using preset numbers while presets do provide guidance, but understanding the fundamentals is where you're truly gonna gain control of shaping your sound. While compression is great to use on your drums, it's not the only tool because if you only use that, you may start to sacrifice a bit of your transients, which is not necessarily bad if you're trying to control the dynamic range but you gotta find a way to bring back in those transients. And in this video, I show you how to do it, along with four other tips to get that hard hitting drum sound faster. So if you like this video, like and subscribe, share with your other producer friends, and until next time, peace.